We're here for a lamp working demonstration with Nate Perea. And Nate, I'm so excited to have you here to do this today. It's great. Absolutely. So Thank you. You're going to show us how to make a bead. I am. I'm going to be making a lamp worked bead. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a torch to melt a glass rod. That molten glass is then going to be wrapped around a stainless steel mandrel that's coated in a bead release. We have a large variety of tools to shape and manipulate that glass. Once the bead is complete, the bead is going to be placed into a kiln to be annealed. And that's going to leave you with a nice stable bead that is then ready to wear or sell. Okay, so where do we start? Well, the glass is available in a large variety of forms. It's, uh, the main is going to be rods. There's noodles and stringers, which are just different sizes of glass. You would use those for decorating? Absolutely, for putting your dots and your real fine lines. Mm -hmm. uh, the different types of glass, they're all, they all have their own specific COE. Now, that is the coefficient of expansion. What that's, does that mean? That's going to be the rate at which the glass is shrinking as it cools. So if you mix COEs, you know, the bead is eventually going to crack where that glass meets. Okay, so you want to be really clear about that before you even get started. Absolutely. Make sure to keep the different COEs completely separate from each other. And what I love is the color. You can really control the color of all the beads in your work this way. You sure can, and there's such a large palette of colors to choose from. Okay. So what I want to start off by doing is talking about the safety. Okay. Here I have protective glasses. You want to make sure you always wear the glasses. Mine have a special lens that's going to eliminate the soda flare uh, produced and from the glass rod. And you'll show us what that rod. means in a minute, right? Absolutely. Um, you want to make sure that you have a sturdy work surface that's covered with a heat-resistant surface. In this case, we have a steel plate. You want to make sure you have good ventilation in the room. An open window with an open door that's going to you know, allow air to flow through the room. Right. You want to make sure you have an apron on to protect yourself from flying glass. You want to make sure that you don't have any loose clothing or you make sure your hair is tied back. Also, a jar with water to put hot glass in is great. All right. So now that we're all set up, you want to make a bead? Let's do it. All right. So tell us about this torch. This torch here is a surface mix torch. This runs on propane and oxygen. There are other forms of torches. Um, over to the side of the workbench over there is a premix torch that runs on disposable propane and map gas tanks. Now this does burn quite a bit hotter, so it's a little quicker to work with on this, and this will allow you to do larger type beads. Probably repeated beads too, if you were going to sit down and make a bunch at one time, you'd Absolutely, it sure will. So what I'm doing now is I am warming up the glass rod. You don't want to put the rod directly into the flame because it will shatter. And while I'm warming this up, I'm going to put the mandrel right behind the glass and I'm just going to start warming up that bead release. Okay. When you go to apply the glass rod to the mandrel, if you find it's not sticking to the mandrel, it's probably because the bead release isn't quite hot enough. Yeah, now this, I took a class in this, and I thought that was one of the hardest parts to getting started was getting coordinated enough to use both hands Absolutely. and kind of keep track of what's warming where. Yeah, it does take a little bit of skill to get that down. So now I'm just going to apply the glass to the mandrel. Look at that. And once the desired amount of glass is put onto the mandrel, you're just going to reintroduce that bead into the heat, and you're going to keep it spinning, and that's going to... Make it nice and even, right? Absolutely. With the heat and gravity, it's going to form a real nice bead. I think this whole process is pretty amazing. It is. I'm going to blow on that just a little bit to cool it down. And what I'll do here is I'm just going to apply a quick dot onto the bead. You want to make sure the core bead is cooled down a little bit, because if you apply a dot to a super hot bead, it's going to misshape the bead. Because it just melts right in it rather should. than laying on top. It's going to melt right in, absolutely. So here I can just go ahead and apply this and pull that right off. And there you would have a nice cool. dot then on top of your bead. Of course, the bead was hot, so it kind of melted in there. That's okay. You just... And this here is a down. fiber blanket, so this just insulates the bead and allows it to cool down without cracking. And then we have our finished piece. And that's going to be a finished bead right there. All right. And then what do we do with this? This we here. We need to anneal it, right? Yes. It needs to be put into a kiln. Right here, the kiln can be used for a couple of things. One, it can preheat your glass rods that you're going to be using in your bead. Oh, right. Um, another is you can anneal the beads either on the mandrel or you can batch anneal them. 
And annealing is really important because that's what's going to prevent your bead from cracking. Yes, and what you want to do is you want to take the bead to a temperature of 970 degrees, allow it to soak for about 30 minutes, and then you want to just let it slowly cool back down to room temperature. Okay, so if we wanted to create a shape with our bead, we would do that before annealing. And while the bead is still hot, you could use something like this to mash it into a cube shape. Absolutely. That and right there is a large scale masher. You can see it just, um, what it's going to do is smash the beads equally on both sides. We have graphite paddles. We have uh, tweezers. All of these are used to shape that hot glass. This is awesome. Thank you so much, Nate. Uh, you're welcome. All right, let's take a look at these finished pieces. You can see some of the amazing designs and colors, and these in the middle are the ones that Nate made, right? Absolutely. Well, thanks again. And we'll be back with Kim St. Jean.